For my research, I'm, I'm interested in trying to identify sequences, biological sequences, DNAs, proteins, RNAs, that are related by very large distances in evolutionary time. So being able to recognize that a gene in a fly is the same as a gene in the human, or that a, a gene in a bacterium is the same as a gene in the human. Um, these sequences have evolved for millions or billions of years. They've, they've split off from each other, but they retain, they conserve um, uh, enough sequence information that you can recognize that with mathematical and computational techniques. And the reason this is important is that we, we think that all life on Earth had a common ancestor. Um, we don't know when that ancestor lived. It lived sometime between maybe two or four billion years ago, depending on who you ask. And the fossil record that has been left by the earliest events in evolution is actually quite thin. The fossil record for things with bones is, of course, famous. Um, but once you get down into bacteria and invertebrates and things like this, it starts to get more and more sketchy. And since the advent of molecular sequencing data, the hope has been that by comparing molecular sequences, it gives us uh, a whole different look um, uh, compared to the geological record. We have, a, we have a different angle to take to start comparing organisms and trying to deduce what happened uh, during evolutionary history. So because we're trying to get at the very deep events in evolution, the deepest possible events, that puts a premium on making methods that are capable of recognizing the most sort of degraded, distant sequence relationships. So if sequences were 95% identical to each other, you can tell by eye, oh, these must be related sequences. But for something like a protein with 20 different letters in the protein alphabet, once you get down to sort of the 1 in 20 kind of identity level, the 5% identity, you're at the noise level. Yet, with modern techniques, we can still tell the difference between things that are related, just not at all, by, by chance, they're just two strings of letters, versus things that really do belong to, say, the same protein family and are related by common ancestry, by evolution. Um, and that has a lot to do with us borrowing techniques uh, from applied mathematics, from signal processing, from computational linguistics, from speech, uh, speech recognition. We bring these techniques into our field of computational biology to try to make more powerful methods. And that's really the heart of what we do, is to try to sort of marry the applied mathematics methods that are known in other communities to our kind of applications in biology. And our group tries to make really good, really robust software that implements those methods that biologists can then use for a whole range of different evolutionary questions.